Hello friends, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and this is your first time here. Welcome to Booked and Busy. Today's video is going to be an end of summer book haul. I have 25 books that I have collected over the summer since my last book haul and I thought I would share them with you. I have them divided into three categories. We have books that I was gifted, um, backlist titles, and 2023 releases. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Before we get into the rest of the video, I would like to thank the sponsor of this portion of today's video, Dossier. If you're unfamiliar, if you haven't been around here before, Dossier is a fragrance company that believes in fragrance for all, fragrance for the 99%. You should be able to smell expensive and luxurious without the expensive markup. Not only is Dossier extremely affordable, as well as having amazing products, both their packaging and their bottles are made of 100% recyclable material. They're cruelty-free, vegan, and environmentally sustainable. Recently, Dossier sent over two new fragrances for me to try and share with you all. First up, we have Gourmand Orange Blossom, and this one has notes of orange blossom, black currant, hazelnut, and this one is inspired by Lancome La Vie S. Belle as well as Fruity Honey, which is inspired by Jo Malone's Nectarine Blossom and Honey Cologne. And this one has notes of black currant and green leaves. So clearly, I was feeling the black currant vibe. And not only are these amazing scents that last really long on the body, they are an amazing deal. So the Gourmand one, this one is $29 for 1.7 ounces, whereas the actual fragrance it's inspired by is $118. You can literally buy three of these for the amount you would pay for one of those bottles and then with the one that is inspired by joe malone this one is 29 dollars as well versus the 80 dollars for a 1.7 ounce fragrance i am a collector of luxury fragrances and i have a growing collection of and fragrances from dossier and i'm much more liberal with my sprays of these because i'm not as conscious of the price per spritz on my body i'm really just wearing the fragrances and loving them and i picked these up and this one i have to say is my favorite this one just smells like new life like renewal it just smells fresh and summery and i guess i said like fresh cut leaves smell that really just comes out uh like i said i have a growing fragrance collection and every day I'm finding myself reaching more and more for my dossier fragrances because I'm able to use them without any guilt and I think that's an amazing thing and beyond the price of these being arranged from $19 to $29 to $49 if you use my code booked and busy five you can get five percent off your order from dossier I recently in my last like dossier haul I said one of the fragrances smelled like a sexy man and so I gave that one to my bestie and someone a stranger on the street walked up to him and asked him if he was wearing Lulaba because that's the fragrance it was inspired by so like the the scents you really cannot tell the difference between the dossier fragrances and the luxury scents that they're inspired by but your wallet can certainly tell the difference so I will leave links in my description to the fragrances that I have picked up and my personal favorites from dossier as well as their website where you can check them out and pick up some fragrances for yourself and once again I want to thank dossier for partnering with me for yet another video and let's get into the book haul okay so let's start with the books that i was gifted so first up we have the women by kristen hannah this is an art that i got from work and this is a uh, january not january february 6th release and this is her latest book this is a historical fiction about the turbulent transformative era in the americas the 1960s the woman is the rarest of novels at once an intimate portrait of a woman coming of age in a dangerous time and an epic tale of a nation divided by war and broken by politics of a generation both fueled by dreams and lost on the battlefield so i'm intrigued to see it uh or read this i haven't read any christian hannah before but i have several books of hers that are on my, my mental cdr and i own i want to say her last release which might have been 2020 2021 which was the four wins i think then we have lore olympus volume four which i have read this gave it to me by mj so thank you so much mj i read this like the next day that i got it and this is definitely an upward trajectory because i hadn't loved the two most recent installments but this one was getting back to the actual romance of it all and that's really what i wanted to see so this is a hades and persephone retelling that's kind of brought into the modern day and we follow a lot of the characters from the larger greek pantheon of gods um and we see it retains a lot of the original some of the elements that could be problematic or um more difficult to have been kind of excised from a lot of retellings but it sticks true in a lot of ways to that and it tells the story of a lot of people but primarily of Hades and Persephone and I really enjoyed it 
tour sent over Wolf Song and Raven Song, book two, one and two in the Green Creek series. Um, these also could have been in the 2023 releases section because these are re releases. I actually have read this already and I own the indie pub version, but tour has picked them up and is publishing them again with these new beautiful covers um this is a series of companion novels that i think have an overarching plot so we have wolf song heart wolf song raven song heart song and i think the finale is brother song and in this one we follow these two people uh one who is a part of a wolf shifter family and the other who is just a normal boy and they kind of become friends and fall in love but it's a lot more angsty and a bit sooner than that and then this one follows another member of this kind of pack and his love story so both of these are male male so i'm excited to read raven song and thank you to tour for those and then bloomsbury sent me this wonderful package that included the 10th anniversary re-release and revised edition of the bone season by samantha Channing, which is the first book in the bone season series which is an adult paranormal urban fantasy i think i'm not 100 sure uh, well, yeah, I think it's also a dystopia because it says the year is 2059. I think it's a dystopian novel, but I've heard really great things. And I know the boss is in a lot of people's favorite series, and I do own this in the original paperback. But um, when I was getting ready to read it, this was announced, and I thought like, well, I might as well wait for the author's preferred edition since I haven't started it already. And I'm excited to have the gorgeous edition, but I know of all the shows. So next, let's get into the backlist titles that I have picked up. And two of these, let's talk about these first, have been re-released and recovered for um, new books that come out in the series, etc. So first up, we have The Warded Man by Peter B. Brett, which is the first book in the Demon Cycle in the Seal of His World, where every night all these demons come out and there's only this wall and the people that are kind of in the no barrier against that and the time has come to stay against the paint. And I know this is like a coming of age story. Uh and the bit that I read uh, I was really intrigued by is if a darkness has fallen or as darkness falls the demon will rise. And this is a blurb uh it's blurb around the top which is my favorite author. It's been really looking forward to it and I really enjoy these new covers. As well as there is a spin off series that I want to say started last year and the sequel to that is coming out next year. So if I love it, I have a lot that I can experience in this world. And then we have The Best of All Possible Worlds by Karen Ward. I don't really know much about this. This is a new cover because of the third book in this, like, interconnected series of standalones, I think, is coming out. And you need the content for the first two books to read it. Uh, so this is The Best of All Possible Worlds. This has been praised and highly lauded by Angela from Literature Science Alliance. And that's who put it on my radar. Um... It says, it's a stunning epic that is at once a new vision of science fiction and a deeply moving love story. A proud and reserved alien society finds its homeland destroyed in an unprovoked act of aggression. And the survivors have no choice but to reach out to the indigenous humanoids of their adopted world to whom they are distantly related. They wish to preserve their cherished way of life but come together to discover that in order to protect their culture, they may have to change it forever. Now a man and a woman from these two clashing societies must work together to save this vanishing race and end up uncovering ancient mysteries with far-reaching ramifications. As their mission hangs in the balance, this unlikely team, one cool and cerebral, the other fiery and impulsive, just may find in each other all their own destinies and a force that transcends them all. And this also, this edition includes two bonus short stories, so I'm really looking forward to that. And if I like it, I can read the Alex again and then the new one, which is The Blue Beautiful World, I think yeah uh recently i've been on like a shakespeare retelling kick and so uh this was inspired by one from my enemy by Libby blake and so i decided to pick up some of the pelican shakespeare editions so first up we have romeo and juliet which is what one from my enemy is based on and antony and cleopatra which is what immortal longings that i recently picked up is based on as well as um the stars undying which i read earlier this year and loved so i'm really looking forward to these i've never the only shakespeare i've ever read was othello and that was like required reading for school but i haven't read any shakespeare beyond that but um the material i want to see the source material because all the girlies are so inspired by mr shakespeare and so i want to see what the original was hitting on I picked up a classic and that is uh Philip Pullman's The Golden Compass the first book in his Dark Materials. I know that this is a favorite of many people that they read when they were younger and also I know that the HBO series is out and I'm told this is actually a lot darker than it seems 
um and i know i think i probably watched the movie when i was a kid but i've never read the book but i'm reading it for a video that's coming soon and i decided to pick it up i know nothing about this uh lyra has spent her life running wild across the rooftops of jordan college with her best friend roger nearly always by her side but now roger has disappeared and lyra and her daemon pan suspect that he may have been stolen by gobblers child snatchers who take their prey north to do unspeakable things but lyra will brave it all armored bears powerful witch clans and a mysterious substance called dust and pan will take the form of a lion a falcon a wolverine whatever it takes to get roger back what lyra doesn't know mustn't know is that her actions will have consequences not just in her world but in all the worlds beyond I also know that there's a spinoff series to this and if I like it maybe I'll check out the HBO show. I picked up a De uh, Deborah Harkness's A Discovery of Witches which is book one in the All Souls trilogy. Becca from Becca and the Books read this recently and her review of it really made me want to pick it up. I've owned the ebook trilogy for a while but um, I was spurred by her reading vlog to pick up the first book and read it for myself. Um, apparently this is British Adult Twilight so that's what, according to Becca. We also have Demon in White by Chris Ferracchio, which is the third book in the Sun Eater series, which is an epic sci-fi space opera about this man who destroys the sun and kills billions of people and it's him telling his life story. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of sci-fi, a big fan of space opera, and the girlies say this is like as good as or as close as you're gonna get to being as good as Red Rising and I love that. Every time I read the synopsis of the Empire of Silence, I really just wanna read it. So uh, I've had my eye out for this one for a minute. I finally scooped it up and I plan on reading that series later on this year. It's one of my priorities and so the, the year is winding down. So is that that much time left to be getting to these books? So next up we have the largest section which are the 2023 oh wait I have one more backlist and that is Normal People by Sally Rooney. I picked this up for another vlog as well. I've never read any Sally Rooney before but I'm intrigued to read my first. Uh, I feel like this is the one that is like the most popular of Sally Rooney's three novels and it's also pretty divisive so I'm excited to see which side of the line that I fall upon and this is about Connell and Marianne who grew up in the same town one's popular one's a loner and they pretend they don't know each other but they actually are their families are very close and it takes us from that first conversation to the years beyond in the company of two people who try to stay apart but find that they can't. I think I was I heard somewhere this is a love story. It's not a romance but it's a love story. I'm intrigued to see what I think. Into the 2023 releases. This is another re-release but this is of, like of the English translation so that's the first time it's been available here and that is Stars of Chaos Sha Po Lang by Priest. This is a Dan May uh, light novel I guess from Seven Seas and it is of course Boys Love or I don't know what the equivalent would be um, in China. I think this is a Chinese author. But it says, a time of change is upon the empire. I think this one gives me like space opera vibes a little bit. It says, the discovery of violet gold, a vital fuel for the steam powered machines propel the empire of great Liang into an age of prosperity. But for Chang Jing, a young man raised on the impoverished northern border, the concerns of the empire are as distant as the stars above. When raiders from the north attack Chang Jing's small village, he discovers that he, the life he knows is a lie. His mother, his teacher, and even his godfather, whom he trusted more than any other, Shin Shilu, are not what they seem. As enemy nations close in, Cheng Jing follows his godfather to the heart of the imperial capital, where a greater fate lies in store for him. This is a steampunk epic, so I'm very excited to get into that. Um, I don't think I have any, I don't have that many Dan May novels, but they all sound so intriguing to me. Maybe Dan May is the equivalent of Voice of, I'm not sure. If you know, tell me. Another 2023 release is Mr. Magic by Kirsten White. Like this cover, mm, this pink, like I'm in my pink era as you can see and I'm really, really excited about this one. So this one is a horror novel about the show that was like a cult classic, but something has happened and no record of the show can be found anywhere. Um, and people just can remember like the theme song and something happens and the cast that was filming the show they are gathered in this like isolated maybe deserted like summer camp situation and things um are are, are gonna be tested um i just love this cover like, this cover is so stunning i want to love this book so bad or at least like enough to keep it because this picture this 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 cover this pink like it's just oh stunning 
stunning stunning stunning uh an indie novel that i have actually already read this is the ashes and the star curse king by carissa broadbent the second book in the nightborn duet and the second book in the crowns of niaxia uh i have the first book in hardcover right up here uh and this series really recently picked up by tour so i did want at least my at least my nightborn duet to match this is a fantasy romance series uh that has to do with vampires and the first book starts with this competition to get this boon from the goddess niaxia I, I really enjoy this one of my favorite fantasy romance series and definitely the series that made me really a carissa broadbent fan so it's coming out from the first book at least it's coming out from tour uh some bramble imprint later on this year in december and i'm sure this is going to come out uh, at some point next year but like the naked hardcover is so pretty that i just had to scoop it up and um i don't know what the future books are going to look like whether Chris is going to publish them first and then tours going to publish them later um but i'm still very much looking forward to the next duet in this series another 2023 sci-fi release we have more perfect by timmy o like another pink moment this cover is just so stunning this is this author a nigerian sci-fi author and this is her sophomore novel the first is do you dream of tier 2 uh which i have on my tbr i haven't read yet but this cover is just so stunning and it's really intriguing um uh, and this one has to do with this like ai utopia type of situation um this one says when she connects her brain to the panopticon a network that allows you to see inside the minds and dreams of others she believes that it will save her from depression loneliness and eventually death that is until she meets orpheus orpheus was brought up in, in isolation by a neo a neo luddite father he was raised to question everything including the government which plans to make the connection procedure compulsory the government makes promises that connecting everyone in, to the panopticon will end human suffering and usher in a perfect world but when orpheus and marimi uncover the nefarious effects of the technology they find themselves on opposite sides of a radical divide those who believe the panopticon will save humanity and those who will stop at nothing to destroy it and i'm just so intrigued like after marathoning the red rising uh second era earlier this summer in july i had just been in such a big sci-fi mood and one of my goals this year was to read more sci-fi because i tend to enjoy it when i do read it but i don't prioritize it and so while i have been doing a better job of it uh i, I still want to read more of it so very excited to have this on my shelves uh ya release that i picked up a because i've this author before b because it's not that sounds really intriguing and c for the summer new releases vlog that is bone smith by nikki palpretto um and this is the first book in a duology uh, i can't think of the name of the duology and it's not on the spine but this is supposed to be getting the ninth meets game of thrones so we follow this world where there are these houses and this our character is from the house of bone and they can animate and control bones and then she and this failing of this like test to become like the higher order in this in this house of bones she is sent to the barrier essentially which is like the wall she's sent to the wall and um she has to partner with this prince from the house of gold and things go from there i'm really really looking forward to this i've read crown of feathers i enjoyed it but i didn't feel the need to continue on with the series but it did have some unique elements so i'm excited to see what nikki palpredo does in this one and then we're down to the last stack of 2023 releases the first is another re-release and that is masses of death by olivia blake this is the latest tour re-release of this author's previously independently published work and this is a standalone about this woman who is trying to sell a house that is haunted and she's also a vampire and this man who is a fraudulent medium but he's also the god center death and how they come together to remove the ghost from this house but somehow a poltergeist gets involved intrigued then we have The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. I heard about this one, or I saw this one, and it wasn't initially intriguing to me, but so many people read it and were like, this is like my favorite book of the year. And it's about this author who was famous for writing these children's books, and he creates this island that mirrors the island that is in his novels. And then uh, he hasn't written for years, and one day he writes a new novel, and he decides to host a competition to bring these people to the island. And the winner will get the manuscript, and they can you know obviously gain fame and wealth and things like that from this and then i think we also follow this woman who is very desperate and down on her luck and she decides that she's going to enter this competition because running this would change her life 
we have the Judas Blossom by Stephen Aryan, book one of the Nightingale and the Falcon. I have a couple books from Stephen Aryan on my TBR that I have not read, but this just sounded really intriguing to me. Um, so I picked it up when I saw it at my indie bookstore. And this one says, uh, this one is, I think, following the sentence of like Genghis Khan and the Mongol Empire. So this is 1260s Persia. Halagu Khan will use any means to fulfill the dream of his grandfather, Genghis Khan, and create an empire that covers the world. Temujin, his youngest son, is given a final chance to prove his worth as a warrior, but there is something dangerous rippling under the surface that makes him far more useful. Kokochin is the last of her tribe, abandoned in a foreign land after being married off to Hulagu. She is determined to find a purpose, no matter the cost. Kavion despises the Mongols for the massacre of his people. But when offered a chance to serve Halagu, he takes it, giving him an opportunity to destroy the Mongols from within. Family and war collide in a thrilling and bloody reimagining of the Mongol Empire's invasion of Persia. Excited. Next up, the premise is going to get me, even though this is an author I've read from before and didn't like. The Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. Mmm vampires in 1860s Mexico you had me and also I think that this cover is stunning I read some early reviews and people say this is a romance masquerading as a horror just because they're vampires and honestly that makes me more intrigued even though the Hacienda or La Hacienda had a romance in it that I wasn't completely here for I'm intrigued to see how this author is going to handle it and so this is vampires and vaqueros face off in the Tex Mexico border in a supernatural western I don't think I've read a Supernatural Western before. I've read a Western Fantasy with um, Brandon Sanderson's Miss Born Era 2. But I'm excited to see Isabel Kanye's take on it. Next up is another book that this is its first time being released in English. And that is Days at the Morisaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagasawa. This is about this young woman who uh, at the beginning of the novel her boyfriend breaks up with her and she finds out that he's getting married to the woman he's been with for even longer than he's been with her. And because they all work together she decides to quit her job and she's done on her luck. And her uncle says you can come and help me out the bookshop and sleep in the room over the store and her life kind of goes from there she discovers herself a bit and somehow the ex kind of comes back into the picture like most translated japanese novels that i have on my tv this is relatively short but i'm intrigued it sounds really good the writing was very captivating and it's a, obviously a charming international bestseller and a hit in japan down to the last two, we have Blood Over Bright Haven by Emma Wong, one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I've actually already read this one. My thoughts on that will be coming in a vlog soon. But this is um, an, a bit more of an urban fantasy, kind of dark academia. We follow this woman who is trying to become the first female high mage of this order. And they live in this world of surrender by this dome. And we follow a, a, the woman on this journey as well as a person who fought to get into the barrier because outside of this it's like a lawless land is there's this dangerous blight that is killing people and he is living in like the underbelly of the city as this like sub worker class and then last but not least this is a book that wasn't originally on my radar but i've seen a couple of my bookstagram girlies read it and really recommend it uh, and compare it to she who became the sun and that is deep as the sea deep as the sky red as the sea by Rita Chang epic is of this woman who is a lady pirate in what is this it doesn't say exactly what time frame it is but it's about this Chinese pirate queen her husband dies and so she marries the second in command to keep control of the ships and it is about their journey together and the forces allied against them and the dangerous price of power so I'm really excited to get to these. A lot of these I do plan on reading soon, but I know that there's some that I won't be able to get to by the end of the year and that's okay. Are any of these on your TBR? Have I convinced you to pick any of them up? Let me know down in the comments. If you made it to the end of the video, let's leave a wolf for Wolf Song by TJ Klune, which is a book that I read and enjoy. And also, I thank you to Dossier for sponsoring an earlier part of this video. If you like what you see, check out my Patreon. There's additional content, reading sprints, etc. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!